The Pack the Rock podcast is back this week, and there's a lot to talk about this week. Today, it's me, Dylan Traeger, joined by Liv Clements, Matt Press, and Noel Ferry. And let's touch base on two weeks ago, IU versus Maryland. We saw Maryland take it 44-17. to What are you guys' first thoughts on that game? Yeah, I mean, I got the pleasure or displeasure of actually seeing that game in person and broadcasting it. So just kind of seeing everything firsthand there and, and watching the plays fully unfold. Sometimes you don't necessarily see everything on TV. It was just just kind of hard to watch overall. I mean, from the get go, Maryland showed that they would pick apart that defense very easily. And and there was no signs of life on offense. Maryland had their number in every sense of the game and and really a damper on everything overall yeah you mentioned it uh that was my main takeaway was kind of how bad the secondary had played because obviously we knew going in the offense would be relatively anemic and in the red zone which they have been all season but yeah just a lot of miscommunication in the secondary it was the same kind of effect we saw against louisville when uh, jack Plummer found jamari thrash for i think it was two separate 50-yard gains and totally attacked by Lowett. same thing with ty felton he had three first half touchdowns. So I think my main takeaway from Maryland was just the secondary that had started the season so well and had kind of shut down Ohio State's receiving core now kind of on a downward swing. And that was a little surprising to me and maybe a little disheartening moving forward. I mean, Maryland really took, like, I think I used one weapon they had, which was their defense, and just totally broke it down. I mean, like you guys said, you saw it on the very first play. The They knew that basically what IU's defense was going to do because, yes, IU's defense was strong, but, again, it's a lot of repeating things. Um, so I think Maryland just took advantage of that. And then they got IU scrambling, which we don't know what to do, what should we play, how did we surprise them. And I think IU got lost in that, and then that's why you bring Soresby in. And you kind of just, like, hurt yourself in that moment. I mean, like, you get scrambled, you don't know what to do, so you start to switch things again. I think Maryland got in their brains and kind of knew what they were going to do and then just broke it down from there. You know, it's a weird subject because you almost wonder, were they trying to prevent injury from Taven Jackson? Were they looking to switch things up? It's something they never really addressed, and it leaves everyone else thinking, what's the future with IU? Soresby did look pretty decent, I would say, in that game for when he played. He went 7 for 11, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Taven couldn't get anything done. Could this mean something different down the road? I personally think Taven is the quarterback, but maybe Coach Allen has a different plan. I mean, I think with the quarterback like decision, I mean, yeah, Brendan Sorsi went in and he actually did pretty good for the time he was in. I mean, like you said, you got those two touchdowns with gave IU like a little spark. I mean, they weren't going to win anyway. Um, but I think it's fair to say that Taven did put on a show. I mean, yes, he threw an interception, but that's something he struggled with all season. Um, but I mean, I feel like it really is going to start with that O-line. I mean, I really think that the O-line has to give Taven time. Um, he struggles when he gets in the pocket and when he starts to feel like he's under pressure. I mean, he starts to run across the field instead of down the field. Um, so, I mean, that's something he needs to look into. I don't think Taven's performance was bad. Um, I mean, Maryland's solid and he's kind of going to get that get back from every team moving forward in the Big Ten. Um, I think that he showed that he's a new quarterback, but I mean, between him and Sorsby, I still think Taven's going to be the best option. I mean, and then you, of course you have Dexter Williams, which is always an option too, um, possibly this season. So I think it'll be interesting, but I think the defense was the downfall. I don't think it was Taven at all. Yeah, I'm not reading too much into bringing in Sorsby. I think it was kind of just garbage time, looking for a spark kind of thing. But uh, Allen committed to Taven Jackson earlier this week isn't all that surprising. I mean, I think his most impressive showing second half against Louisville was when Taven Jackson kind of we saw his potential kind of moving around the pocket, touch on those deep passes. So I'm not reading too much into that. I think Taven's their guy moving forward until potentially Dexter Williams is back, which we can discuss later. But against Michigan and in the foreseeable few weeks, I think it's Taven's the guy. Yeah, and I think overall, I think there was some silver lining to take away from from the offense. I think that Christian Turner looked pretty good, all things considered, especially, you know, with the offensive line struggling. He showed some patience. He found some good gaps that he got through, uh, some yak. And uh, I think that going forward, he's a veteran that can make a difference in that backfield. And then McCulley finally, you know, having a, a pretty decent game overall. He got open down the field. He didn't really have any bad drops or anything like that. So overall, I, I think that's good. But just when when the one part of your team that's supposed to keep you in games doesn't, and then you don't really have an offense that much to begin with, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, I love the Turner and McCulley 
like, combo they have going on offensively. I mean, I really feel like those weren't two people that everyone was looking at. Everyone was mm-hmm. kind of, you know, Cam Camper and um, Jalen Lucas. But, I mean, you look at Turner and McCauley, I feel like they flow with Taven. I feel like that's what he has to look for is find those receivers that you, you can read plays with, right, on the field. You know where they're going to be. Um, I feel like that's when he was the strongest is when he knew that those wide receivers and him could see each other on the field. So I feel like that's important to look into, too. I mean, you had – Sores be coming, they kind of change the offense a little, which is fine. Um, but I think with Turner and McCauley out there, I think Taven really gets more confident. And you also start to wonder, is this flow of the offense going to change now with Walt Bell being fired? Any connections that have been a come on on the offense, are they going to end up changing? Are they going to stay? Walt Bell didn't even last two seasons with IU, and now they're bringing in Rod Carey, who does have head coaching experience, so I am confident in his abilities, but... I'm just hoping that their offensive connections don't change with different plays being called. I think if Carey, if Rod Carey and Allen are smart, they won't change much of the offense. I really feel like it's going to be important for him to step up and just kind of try to improve Taven's game, kind of try to just get offensively a flow. I think that there's no point in changing the offense drastically. Like we all say, it's late in the season at this point. Yes, like, really only five games in. But that's really basically halfway. Um, so I really feel like offensively, they really just need to keep it going uh, with what they have. I don't think it's the time to, like, switch Taven's game. I feel like he's still trying to find it, um, kind of what he's good at and what he needs to improve with. Um, same with all the wide receivers. I mean, you haven't really seen much of Camp Camper either, right? Um, so I think, like, going in offensively, I think Rye Carey just really needs to step up as a coach um, instead of really just sitting on the sidelines. Um, I think that's going to be a great opportunity for him to look forward into his IU career as well like outside of the players I think for him this could be a pivotal moment in his coaching abilities um but I think offensively it won't change too much if they're smart it won't change too much yeah midseason I wouldn't expect the offense to just be completely reinvented like conceptually or aesthetically or anything like that I think the main thing we should look for is play calling and red zone short yardage downs because as we saw with Walt Bell it was a lot of option which rarely worked I mean Indiana is the worst, one of the worst red zone offenses in the Big Ten. And so I think we could see some change there. And I think an interesting thing outside of Rod Carey, who we mentioned has some extensive head coaching, offensive coordinator experience, is uh, Justin Fuente, who was brought in this week. He kind of had a rough time at Virginia Tech, but he's a good offensive mind. I think they're looking for him to kind of step in as more of a quarterback role with that room because Carey is named as the quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, but... I think they're going to be looking for Fuente to step in to the quarterback side of things a little bit. So overall, I wouldn't expect the offense to change too much. But um, Carey said it was keeping the things we're doing well going and stopping the things we're doing bad. Honestly, I don't think they're doing a lot well right now on offense. So we can see if they change anything there, reinvent anything. But I wouldn't expect drastic changes in the offense. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big reason why coming into this season, I think some people thought, you know, Soresby might even be the starter at the start is because he had been in that offense for a little bit. So if you start with a fresh slate now, you've lost all the progress. Well, be it not that much progress has been made this season. You lose, you lose all your progress. So overall, yeah, like you said, I, I think that the short down situations and overall just the use of Jalen Lucas. Liv mentioned it earlier, a lot of lateral movement from skill players, from Taven and from Jalen Lucas screens and everything like that, that just end up getting you negative yards overall. And it's it's great to think, you know, oh, let's get Jalen Lucas in open space. Well, if every time all you're doing is throwing a screen or running the option, teams are going to blow that up every time. So, you know, I think that that can be fixed. And other than that, you just try to, you know, build upon a bit of experience for all these new players. I mean, I think what's important to mention, too, is I think what's shooting IU in the foot is I think they're looking maybe too far into maybe like next season. I think like the season's not over. And do I think they're going to be bowl eligible? No. But do I do think that there's games that they can still win? Yeah. So I think. Like, instead of making these coach change, like coaching changes or player changes or starting QB changes, like, they need to be because you want to better this year. And I think that I'm worried that they're looking maybe into, like, next season. Like, okay, we could see Rod Carey being a good coach for next season. Let's see how he does now. But it really needs to be, can he be a good coach to finish out this season? And I think that needs to be the same with Taven. Like, 
we aren't just going to put Soresby and Taven in because we want to see who could be good and stay for next season. It's to be who's going to help us win this season and what QB is going to do better this season to help them win. Um, same with Jalen Lucas. Same with all these wide receivers and defensive players. I mean, we're not really bringing up Kobe Minor a lot def- defensively, but he's really doing a good job. And so I really think that all these players, like, they need to be working on this season instead of looking into next season, especially with coaches and stuff. You can make changes, um, but do it for the betterment of the team for the season right now. And, you know, you look ahead. Indiana's playing Michigan this week. That's going to be Rod Carey's first game working with the offense. I'm very frightened for that game. I'm not sure about you guys, <laughs> but you listened to last week's episode or two weeks ago, and Riley Woodall, all he could talk about was the Michigan stats <laughs> yes. and how good J.J. McCarthy is and how he's got them winning the national championship. And I would say going into this game, you know, I was about this worried for the Maryland game, and I'm going to be about that worried for the Michigan game. (laughs) I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, Michigan, they're ranked number two for a reason. I think right now, neutral field, they give Georgia a hell of a game. Definitely a national championship contender. I mean, far and away the best defense in the country, which doesn't bode well against an Indiana team who struggles offensively. But, um... And uh, you talked about mentioning J.J. McCarthy, who's been phenomenal this season. And even more shocking is he hasn't had to play that much just based on game scripts and how much Michigan's been blowing everyone out. And you can talk about kind of their schedule and who they played, but you play the teams on your schedule and they've blown every team they've played out of the water, even though it's kind of lesser tier Big Ten teams. But yeah, I mean, they're giving up less than seven points a game. They haven't had a team even inside their 10-yard line this entire season. So it's about as tall a task as you can get for Indiana, and I wouldn't expect much. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you would need to take every superstition, every little, you know, (laughs) idiom that people say about games like this and and hope for the best that they all come true at the same time. You know, there's been doubts about J.J. McCarthy over the past few years. You know, is he really one of the best quarterbacks in college football? And I don't have the answer to that question really right now. But you would need to have him have a horrible, horrible game, need the secondary to really tighten up and play like they played against Ohio State. And overall, you would just need Michigan to look at this game as, you know, a non-factor on their schedule, keeping their eyes ahead to next next week and, and their better matchups down the rest of the season. But, I mean, yeah, there's not much more else I can say. It just does not bode well for Indiana this weekend. And honestly, it couldn't get much more embarrassing than Akron. And then it couldn't get much more embarrassing than Maryland. And then now we'll see how it goes against Michigan. It, it always can get worse. And I would say it's going to be pretty demoralizing when Indiana's down five scores and it's Jack Tuttle throwing touchdowns against Indiana. <laughs> to AJ Hart. I think that's the bottom of the pit. And that would be the most demoralizing it can get in that game. I mean, okay. <laughs> I agree, right? I don't see IU winning this game. But, I mean, right, so you have J.J. McCarthy who... Has just been, I feel like this is just his season. And I think that's really unfortunate when you go against someone and he's just having a stellar season. I mean, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, those three interceptions, I think we're only in one game. Um, so it's not even like, it's not like he's really been struggling with that. Um, but the thing about him is like, he really will run, right? And once he starts running down the field, I think no defense has really been able to stop him. That's what worries with me is I think you saw in that Akron game when um, Akron's QB started to run, I used defense was just like all over the place, right? Um, but then you have Blake Corman on Michigan who's just been insane as well. Um, so yes, they have heavy hitters, right? But I think what I like that Noel said was, I don't think Michigan should look at any team right now as, okay, that's just another team swept under the rug. I don't think any team should. Um, I I am going to be the person that I do think Michigan's schedule is really weak. I mean, they rank 111th nationally when it comes to how hard their schedule is. Um, I do think that's going to play a factor. I can't base Michigan off how they've played right now. 6-0, and 3-0 and in the Big Ten is a big deal. But, I mean, I'll see how I feel when they go against OSU and Penn State towards the end of their season. I think for IU, take this as a learning game. I mean, I think Taven could really have a good game um, if he comes in confident. I think if you come in weak-minded, um, oh, no, we have to play Ann Arbor, like you're already going to struggle. I think Taven, if he steps up, leads the team, gets good wide receivers, gets good running backs, I think it would be a good game for him offensively. I don't think this would be a good game for IU as a whole, no. I also just want to add, uh, Maryland was the team's, you know, first true away game of the season, and that stadium was not really filled, like, 
at all. It, it, right. it was not that great of a crowd in Maryland. You're talking about the big house now up in Ann Arbor. <laughs> it is going to be rattling for any team to be there. And also, not only the big house, this is a big noon kickoff game, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. going to be sold out. And whether it is or isn't sold out, it's going to be on national TV. And everyone's going to watch IU <laughs> get demolished. I mean, you can look at it this way. There's nothing stopping Michigan from blowing IU out once they step out of that tunnel. And if I'm going to be brutally honest on this one, I've got Michigan kicking the Hoosiers out of the big house 45 to 10. Oh. Yeah, all I can really say about the big noon kickoff is sorry for people around the country that are going to be watching that on TV. <laughs> um, score prediction, I'll say, I'll say 44-7. Michigan. I think it's worth noting, too, they're the least penalized team in the country. They just don't beat themselves. So, I mean, when you're a team like Indiana who needs virtually every single possible thing to go right in this game and more to even have a chance at coming within maybe a few possessions, um, Michigan's just not going to beat themselves. They have, it's about 2.1 penalties a game. They're as disciplined a team in the country as there is. You mentioned Blake Corm and JJ McCarthy and their rushing attack, just a lockdown defense. It's I wouldn't I wouldn't expect a whole lot. I mean, I'm gonna go I'm gonna say that it's gonna be forty two to fourteen. Um, which is yes, that's a hard loss, but I think that there's potential that it there's potential that IU could get more points. I think that defensively they're not going to stop Michigan. I think Michigan's going to have a field day offensively. Um, but I do think that IU can step up offensively. I think, I mean, they're coming off a bye week, which I feel like that is important to have going into Michigan. I mean, you really had time to really heal up some players, really get those kinks out, practice a full week with no game with a new offensive coordinator. I mean, that's going to be important going into Michigan's game. You kind of take a breather. Kind of relax, look at film, see how you feel. Um, so I think that ended up being beneficial for them. I don't think it's going to change a whole lot. Um, but I do think that IU has potential to maybe show out a little bit. But I don't see this being like, oh, my God, this is going to make the news the next day. IU beat Michigan. I just don't see it. Yeah, for my score prediction, I actually do think Indiana might be able to find their way into the end zone overall just because of, you know, in garbage time against Maryland, Brendan Sorsby looked looked pretty decent. So mm-hmm. my my score prediction is going to be forty eight to ten. I said a few times. I think they'll get in there one time, maybe, and then the only chance they have of scoring otherwise is is a decently long field goal. I I just find the possibility of getting a first down on a drive to be like step one for for this yes. team. Like before you talk about anything else. You need to get a first down, and when it's when you have a situation like that, it's just it it's not looking good. I almost feel like it needs to be like a game where they try to stay out of being in the ten yard line. I think that it needs to be maybe a game where you see Taven throw more accurate long passes. I think that could be crucial. I mean, I feel like they really need to stay away from where their weak points, and their weak points is right when they get to the end zone. There's no way they feel like they can get in there. Um, I feel like it either ends up in just going to fourth down, or it ends up with Taven might possibly throw an interception into the end zone. Um, so I really feel like if they hit on longer passes, that gets them closer, or maybe just gets them that touchdown off rip. Um, it could be way better for them. Um, I just have a fear that they're going to start to break under pressure when they see those weak spots. But hey. We have a new offensive coordinator, so maybe he'll get those kinks out during bye week. It's the goal. We'd love to see that. And uh, <laughs> I'd also want to touch base on uh, Dexter Williams. You know, I use not being so transparent on what his status is with his injury. He is suiting up for games, and you see him getting reps in outside of the games. And I feel like we're being left out as fans and of Big Ten fans of seeing where could he be. Yeah, I mean... Do we really feel like it's fair, like, to keep... I feel like you keep bringing... We keep bringing him up, but I feel like if I was almost him, I would honestly be accepting that this is going to be Taven's year. Um, I think for him, I think it's strong for him to have the potential to come back, and I really feel like he really could. Um, But I feel like there should be that part of him to accept that this really is going to be Taven's year. I mean, he's really been in the spotlight. I really don't see them all of a sudden taking Taven out 
um, for example, like the Rutgers game and then putting Dexter in the rest of the season. I just don't think it's fair to Taven as well um, with how much improvement he's shown and how much he's trying to grow. Um, but I do think Te- Dexter can get in maybe some plays. I mean, maybe the Michigan State or Purdue game would be good options for him to try to get into there, see how he's feeling. But, I mean, Coach Allen said they're not putting him in until he's 100%. And like you said, as fans, we don't really know where he is at all. Um, he might be at 50% and not, might not even be close to playing. Um but I do think that they should give him that option, Michigan State or Purdue, to maybe put him in. But I don't think it's ever going to be a starting position for him this year. Yeah, we heard uh, we heard on Monday from Tom Allen that he's nearing 100%. Uh, like you said, we don't know exactly what that means. It was a really, really severe knee injury he had last season. But um, he did come along a lot faster than they expected in the fall. And um, if he's saying he's nearing 100% now, I think we can expect game action in the next few weeks. I don't want to confirm anything obviously because we just don't know but um things are looking bright for him and obviously we saw in the few games he played last season he added a different dimension to the offense that they don't have with Taven or Soresby so I think that's interesting to note but um I would expect Dexter Williams to get in when he's ready and maybe start a little bit of a quarterback battle there with Taven Jackson but um like I said we'll we'll see yeah, I just don't think you've seen enough from from anybody this season to necessarily feel 100% confident in your job. And if you can come in and mix things up, why not at this point? Why not try out something new? Uh, Dexter Williams is the type of guy who he can be explosive. And if at the very least you can get exciting plays out of someone or just plays that gets you excited on the sideline, maybe that's worth taking a look at. I think there will be some times that we see Dexter Williams take the reins this season. Whether or not he'll be successful, who knows? Um, You know, didn't see too much action in terms of passing that much when, when he was here this past season, but you never really know. I think that, you know, maybe it's a Donovan McCauley type of situation, but um, yeah, I, I think it's worth taking a look at. No, I agree. And I feel like we, I, I feel like IU hasn't seen any success necessarily from any quarterback and any option could be a good viable option to play with and I think putting Dexter Williams in let him see how he runs the offense it could work out and if it doesn't it doesn't work out they're not in line to get to a bowl game or finish the top of the Big Ten so why not play around with it see if he could have an impact on next season where we have three quarterbacks shaping up for IU yeah I mean I think also, but like like I said earlier, if we if IU decides to put Dexter in and see how it is, do it because you think it will better this season, right? Like do it to try to get more wins this season. Don't do it because oh, let's just see how he does. We're down twenty points. Let's just put Dexter in and see what happens. I think put him in because you feel like this might be better suited to finish out the season and get some more wins. I mean, it's not really time the time for Tom Allen to just be, you know not really caring about if we win games because I feel like with um, Rod Carey and the rest of the coaching staff, Tom Allen needs to be maybe looking in the mirror at his, where he's going to be um, next season. So I really feel like any any decision that needs to be made with changes should be to better this season because right now you've won two games so far. You're about to go against a team that's won six. So, yes, you're at the bottom of the totem pole. At this point, you need to be working your way up. So every decision you make, whether it's with Dexter or a new coach, needs to be to better this season. I also would add, I'm not sure how much of an impact it is, but like overall morale from Dexter Williams, IU wouldn't want to lose him in the portal. And I feel like IU, if they hold out from playing him, definitely could hurt his personal feelings of the team. And you wouldn't want to lose a guy like him in the portal, considering IU doesn't know how long Taven Jackson or Sorsby is going to stay. And he turns into like a Mike Penix. Exactly. I mean, I (laughs) don't think that could live with any IU fan. Yeah, it turns into a Mike Penix situation and he goes and becomes like Heisman. That'd be a rough way to end it off. <laughs> really rough. I, I, I hope you didn't say that again. <laughs> no. You're kind of scaring me a I little bit I take it back. I take it back. But it's definitely possible with the IU's record so far. Definitely is possible. <laughs> but it's IU playing Michigan at the Big House this Saturday. Fox, big noon kickoff. That's it for the Pack the Rock podcast on Hoosier Network. Thank you for listening in this week.